to the Millennial Miha podcast. Um, I'm so excited to have back a guest who has been on the show before. Um, her name is Jennifer Escalera, and she is a hyper, wait, what is it? Wait, hyper intuitive, mystic healer, all of the words. I can't remember all of them in order, but can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Say that again? Metaphysical intuitive. Exactly, exactly. That's but I'm a bit hyper right now because I'm going live. So, <laughs> but yes, I uh, have coined the metaphysical intuitive healer and um, an instructor for my um, energy healing certification program. And um, I'm a clairsentient. So that's someone who is very sensitive to emotions, energies, like an empath. Absolutely. And as you all know, if you have listened to the podcast before, or just follow me at all, I constantly mention Jen, because she has been such an instrumental part of my healing process. And if any of you have been to the season of self workshops, those are kind of a manifestation of my time with Jen and the things that I learn um, in her presence. And I think that if you follow me, you know how much I respect her and uh, just value her as a friend, but also as someone who has kind of been like a guide on my journey. And I wanted to specifically talk today about healing as a profession, because I think so many of the people who follow me are on similar journeys as, as I am of healing, mm -hmm. you know, attempting to heal themselves and wanting to know more, you know, but hitting a wall because, you know, there's only reading can only take you so far you know you need to be able to to do things in practice um in practice and have someone to ask specific types of questions to and that's what i found that has been so uh helpful to me is to be able to have someone who i feel speaks my language and i can relate to on certain levels and who can answer me back in those type of same terms. You know, it's not this whole hard to understand like mysterious thing anymore because the person who's teaching you is familiar. And so I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how did you choose healing as a profession and why? Mm. Ooh. Well, I'll try to give you the cliff notes, the short end of it. But basically I've been on a healing journey pretty much my whole life. Um, I grew up Catholic. And I'm not a practicing Catholic anymore, but I grew up in the church and just very devout uh, Catholic. I went to mass every Sunday. I prayed to God. I mean, I still do, but my understanding what God is is more than just a institutionalized organization. But, um, you know, there's been various traumas and hardships and things in my life, even as a child, um, sensitivities of my emotions, um, feeling very unsettled and unsafe and insecure. I was always a seeker as a kid, like I was always a big thinker. And um, I just was very curious. And so when I went to college, when I moved away from my hometown, after high school, I started learning about different uh, cultures and the ways that they healed. And so that actually is what started my journey in exploring my own healing and then being able to be of service to others. And that has actually been something that I have always wanted to do, even um, when I was in fourth grade, I remember my fourth grade teacher, yeah. I wanted a teacher, I always wanted to help people, I always had a sensitivity to people's energies and emotions, but I never knew what it was called. Um, so, so yeah, so that's been the cliff notes, hopefully. So like, so like emotionally intelligent, like, but not really knowing what that really meant, just kind of understanding people's energies, like you said, and just sensing things. Um, like a deep kind of knowing, you know, and some of us are built with that. And I think a lot of people who, who follow me and, and who listen to this podcast can relate to that uh, because kind of we find each other somehow, you know, whether it's by a, an author or a book or, I mean, a podcaster or just someone we try to, I think we gravitate towards one another. And it's great because it seems like the Mystic Living School has created a community of healers. And so I wanted you to talk a little bit about how, um, how, you built that community? Mm. Um, well, it's, it's been a journey as well, you know, um, just really 
sending out the same message of, you know, not feeling alone along this journey of feeling different or feeling like you have this sense, but you don't know what it is and you don't know maybe the language or you carry on a lot of anxiety and stress, um, depression at times. And so because I've gone through that journey, I started educating myself about the language and even changing some of the language against mental health and stigmas around certain words as depression or anxiety, Mm -hmm. you know, so transforming some of that into more of energy language, frequency, vibrations, that kind of language. And so I think just speaking on that terms, I think has made me get clear in who I want to surround myself with because people like us who are empaths, who are intuitives, um, who are outspoken, who are activists, like we can attract people and that could be good. That could be dark and light people. And so for me, like I'm at a stage in my life where I just really want to be surrounded around light people and people who want to make a difference in the world. I think parts of my story and parts of my old trauma is attracting toxic relationships and feeling codependent and feeling stuck. So I want to get out of that narrative as well as hold myself accountable. So I think having the support of a community of like minds also keeps me in that alignment, keeps me like shakes me up, wakes me up, alters my perceptions and things. And so I know that I can go to my community and feel inspired instead of drained. Yes. Yes. I, I noticed, um, I noticed that a lot of people that follow you on your page, um, seem to have the word healer or something in, in, um, in their name that indicates that they are a part of that community. And so I think, like you said, the light seeks the more light, you know, and I think that's something I have learned from you. And, um, mm. even on a personal level, just by getting to know you, I feel that you've taught me um, healthy ways to communicate because I have never had a person to practice those things with. And so having conversations, mm. which I think before I would have run from or been scared to have for whatever reason, like being, being friends with you has uh, helped me learn how to do that. And so it's like even not just the professional part of what you do, but even in your interpersonal relationships, this is kind of like a, it's less of a profession and more of a vocation, right? Like a calling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for that too, because, because I don't really have that in my family, my community is also an extension of my family. I know growing up as a kid, I always felt like my friends were my family more than my own biological family, you know, and anyone who is watching of my family, I don't mean to disrespect you, but that's how I felt, you know, (laughs) so, um, but yeah, like having the conversations or going really deep, you know, going into a universal cosmic level or about the stars, the moon, and not feeling weird or not feeling out there um, is also part of what this community offers to me and and other people is that we can have that kind of those deep conversations philosophical esoteric kind of conversations and I feel like I belong somewhere because I've never really felt like I belonged in any subculture you know as radical or as punk rock a culture could be you know never feeling like I was in a place until you know coming into this more light work into this energy healing work Mm. so Mm -hmm. what what would you say the characteristics of someone who you know isn't quite sure about the healing profession but you know what are some things that they probably have in common you know some things I heard you mention where they are like you were a big thinker, very curious, different, felt like an outsider, like sensitive to energies, um, you know, easily drained, um, but also, you know, know when to stay away from certain people, you know, things, those are types of things that you are, before you really know that you have that awakened consciousness about the topic, you know, like what are some signs? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, those are some signs, but also just getting like, an instinct in your body, um, a gut feeling, synchronicities like numbers or words that keep popping up 
whether it's from songs or you know some something that you see or you hear and it's repeated over and over again you know hearing those things and making those connections or having dreams um having an inspired interest almost like manic you know you have like this um anxious energy almost um more like manic energy like you're just like oh I want to learn this I want to learn that and you get excited about it um hmm? like you're on overdrive you're on overdrive yeah and so you're just like thirsty you're hungry you want to learn more and it feels good you know to learn these things and to find ways to to stop the pain you know a lot of my beginning journeys was to stop hurting was to stop feeling bad was to not feel so insecure you know never in my wildest dreams would I ever think that I'd be comfortable doing a live like this you know I'm so introverted I'm so shy or I'm so anti all of this you know there's a part of me that still is like ah I'm so like anti-social media but at the same time like okay I gotta be out there like I there's people like me so I gotta get over myself and just be out there like for that, others that shadow work that you taught me about mm -hmm. exactly exactly so going through you know acknowledging that you have a shadow acknowledging that there are parts of your ego or parts of your pain that still show up that still block you or prevent you but you're a seeker, you want to learn more, like there's still an instinct that there's something more out there for you. Deep down, even though there might be patterns of behaviors or patterns of belief systems that um, still you feel stuck, but there's something still deeply in you that wants more, that knows that there is something more than what's going on. So you're still curious. So I think those are some things about a healer and just the sensitivities, you know, to, to energies. I want to ask the audience, anyone who's watching, um, drop some emojis if you can relate to anything that Jen just talked about. I highly have, I highly believe um, just ever since I started this journey, I can start to see that every person that happens to be somewhere at a certain time, it's like there's no such thing as happens. So I believe that probably there's someone in here who, um, needs to hear this and needs to have the information that we have in in this live because you know information finds a, it finds a way to you somehow and if you're awake to it you can grab on but i found myself you know in the in the energy sessions that we've done together i found myself um learning things that make me reframe my past and look at my past in such a different way where i can empathize with myself and others and um, you know, just been able to work through those things that you call the shadow and um, mm -hmm. accepting people and things like that. And I just wanna know, you know, how would you, how would you explain to someone who doesn't believe in this stuff? How would you explain mm -hmm. to them what's happening when we contact our ancestors you know because that's a huge thing that you and i have been doing together and uh working with my elders and my ancestors and i want to know how would you explain that um to someone who is just completely new to it mm -hmm. so there's two questions i heard you ask there's one person who is new to it is a beginner and then one who's a skeptic yeah so the first, I'll answer the skeptic. Um, for the skeptics, I, I don't really have to explain because you're not going to believe me anyways. Mm. So you're not really worth my time to explain the power of what I've been given, the power of what I have seen happen in people's lives in, in the ways that they've manifested in the way that they just present you know, their face, their aura, their goals, you know, just the things that they're doing differently. That's the truth. So the skeptics, there's something that they're missing and they're going to be too logical for me to explain. So um, there's that. But for the beginner, um, it's a process. You know, how do you connect to your ancestors? I mean, I, 
when I first started my healing journey, my healing practice, I didn't connect on that level. I was so scared. I was so afraid that people were going to think I was crazy. I was weird. What if I got it wrong? What if I'm just making it up? So I had my own fears of being judged as well as there were past life uh, experiences that I had to work through as well. You know, so doing like um, past life regression uh, Mm -hmm. sessions I had to work through. So um, going through that journey and acknowledging my own personal fears helped me to finally release and just I started just saying like, hey, I'm getting this. I'm sensing this. What does this mean to you? I also let my clients know, don't give me information because I don't want to be biased about it. or I don't want to misguide you because you said something about someone. And now I'm thinking like, oh, it's a male, you know, so I try to be as um, non-informed as possible so that I can truly give someone the, the information that I'm receiving. Mm-hmm. But um, my, my um, advice, my suggestion or recommendation is to start meditating, is to create a sacred practice, is to create a discipline, a ritual, something that helps you to quiet and tune in and start learning your different senses and through learning your different senses then start just practicing but at the same time you also want to be mindful of if we are connecting with our ancestors that we also have ancestors that didn't have people's best interests you know that they were quote unquote bad people so we also don't want to bring that kind of dark energy into our space so if you're going to learn how to do that you want to make sure that you protect yourself and that you're only asked to be guided um, by ancestors or those loved ones who have passed on um, that they come from um, their highest and greatest good and that they come from a pure place of love can you um because you mentioned earlier the change that uh you know you know skeptics could say whatever they want but they can't change what you have experienced in terms of the change you've seen in people and I was curious because I still remember the first like FaceTime I ever had with you and I Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it because it was just like oh my gosh that's where the light is like I was in the darkest place of my (laughs) life and I just want to like ask if you would um share you know that can you describe the, the change you've seen in me from when we met until now Oh, yeah, just, just that openness, you know, just feeling lighter, being more clear, having more direction, um, being more open to um, the work that we're doing. Um, You have always been from my experience, you know, with our connection, you've always been a creative person, but it feels like this creativeness has ascended even more deeply you know I hear a lot of the quest that you're on the quest of helping others you know who are going through these dark stages or who are going through these stages and having a community having space to to articulate it and to express themselves so um, I definitely see along that and just being more intentional and thoughtful of the decisions that you're making yeah you know being aware of your emotions and tuning into your emotions leads you to be more intentional and thoughtful and that's the thing that i that's the thing that i learned from you is how to do that and so it was like it's so interesting how you know we also have things you've taught me about our you know our our childhood trauma and how that affects us you know i've learned a lot of that from you um and the exercises that we've done in our cleanses and you know it's opened so mon- many doors in my mind you know to to like to see how the world really is as opposed to the way my fear was making me see it and mm-hmm. 
that's where I feel like this surge of creativity is coming from because like you said I was always a creative person but I remember what you said when I first got there was that you're blocked you like you did this like chakra on all my things like things <laughs> it was like blocked 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 <laughs> that's right yeah 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 <laughs> and you were just like you're blocked like you are blocked and we worked I feel like I went through some type of war like mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. they, yeah I feel like I went through mm -hmm. some type of war and it, it's the only thing I've ever really been committed to. Mm. And just by being committed to that one thing, it literally automatically raised my whole rest of my life up. Like it was like a, a cheat code. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that cheat code is, you know, permanent. Now it becomes part of your decision making, you know, your problem solving, your ability to tune in, it gives you a life skill, a new life skill to be able to um, live a life that's more fulfilling and happy. And I think that's what you're also sharing with your community is how do they excel in that area of finding their true happiness? Yeah. Yeah. I think I was in the dark for so long. And so you, show, you showed me how to get there. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got to give it back. So yeah. thank you for that. Um, oh, so you're welcome. And it's so funny, really quick. I keep seeing, like, this round. I don't know if I have a shadow around my head. A little bit, yeah. But, <laughs> but it's like, okay, the shadow and the light is here. Oh. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the Jennifer show. <laughs> I know. So I want to know, um, how, how can you, so like, like I was just saying, you know, I like to, whenever I learn something, I automatically like to give it to everyone around me. And, you know, you found a way to do that with this certification program. And so I want you to talk a little bit about the certification program and tell my audience how, you know, if, if these are some things that you feel that you are a big thinker, curious, you feel like an outsider, you're sensitive to energies, you, you're often insecure, you know, you experience um, imposter syndrome more than, more than most people you feel like, you know, but you also are a seeker and you feel like there's something more that you're looking for. If you feel that you are this kind of person, it is highly likely that you are a healer. And so mm -hmm. once you get there, you know, then there's like, okay, what now? How, how do I learn more about this, about what I truly really am, what I was born to do? And how do I help people with it? And so it's just like this continuous circle that goes around of light in the world. And so you are a mm -hmm. propeller of that light. And this program is a propeller of that light. And so I want you to talk about the certification program and tell us about what that is. Yeah, so the certification is also just as any of my projects or offerings um, was downloaded. So what I mean by downloaded is I received this information, this sacred wisdom. And what it is, it's, it's, it's a space, it's a sacred space, it's a sacred community of opportunities to heal yourself and to heal others to heal the world, to heal Mother Earth, the animals, like any living thing, anyone who wants to receive it. And you go through this journey learning about yourself and you learn about your patterns. And it's really an extension of my one-on-one -on -one sessions, but really teaching people how to do it themselves and how to help others along the journey. So we're talking about chakra centers, so this is the energy system that we have in our body that is what affects our, our organs, our mind, our emotions, our soul on all different holistic levels, right? So we go into learning about the chakra systems, the auras, the energies of color, um, how to create altars, how to work with our intuition. You know, that's a primary uh, skill that we go over and it's weekly classes where every student is practicing on one another and it, you're learning these skills of how to trust your intuition how to trust your senses so that you can be able to tune in 
to the vibrations of someone. So that person who is sensitive or is an empath, um, who doesn't know how to, um, you know, not be a sponge and absorb all this energy, mm -hmm. you learn how to take care of yourself and to have these um, energetic and spiritual cleanses. Like you learn your own hygiene in your practice. You also learn about the deep connection of meditation. You know, what is meditation and how does that work for you? I also teach you how to work with crystals. You know, I'm holding some Lemurian wands because I am a little nervous, but, uh, <laughs> you know, so this uh, strengthens my energy. So learning the power of what some of Mother Earth's gifts has brought to us, you know, learning about um, trance journeys, meditation, or I'm sorry, hypnosis and journey work. Yeah. Uh, to be able to help someone to go into those deep stages. So for someone who likes to express their own abilities, someone who likes, who is a creative, who wants to apply their gifts and craft their own modalities or own uh, combination of the modalities that I teach, that's what this program also offers. You know, there's lots of supervision. So there's lots of like connections to me. It's a small class. It's a small group. So we talk a lot about things that are going on in our lives and we're able to get support from one another and be able to collaborate on uh, different ways to use the modalities that I teach to help you along your journey of learning the skills and healing yourself at the same time. So it's basically like going to Hogwarts. Oh, I don't even know what that is. What's Hogwarts? That's the Harry Potter goes to, duh. Oh, sorry. I I don't watch those. I'm sorry. I'm not a part of that club. Okay, no, basically it was basically <laughs> the joke was basically it's like going to magic school. Yes, yeah. Exactly. You know, so finding the your inner magic, finding your inner mystic and utilizing all the natural things that, like I said, that Mother Earth, Mother Nature, like, quote unquote, God, you know, higher power, whatever you want to call it, um, why it's all here and why we can access it and how it's truly a gift and an opportunity for us to be able to access um, what's already here. I'm not, I didn't make these things up. Yeah. You know, the tools and the techniques and the practices that I'm teaching, those were received. I also went to school and, and did, got different certifications. I have my degrees, but a lot of it is personal downloads that I received from my guides and my ancestors. So some of the stuff that I teach, you're not going to find in a book, yeah. you know, it might be in other books because we've all gotten downloads you know, and we're very similar in the ways, but, um, but yeah, so. and so hope that answers it. <laughs> definitely answers it. I mean, this, this program is perfect for someone who wants to enter into this journey, not necessarily to turn it into a, pro a profession, but with the option to, because, you know, you go in to, you know, refine your gifts. And you come mm -hmm. out with the option to practice this as a career, if you like. And that's what I think is so unique about the program. Um, I think that's, it's, it's equally beneficial either way you look at it. Yeah. And it's also for people who are already um, in the healing arts, you know, like also my background you know, I'm a licensed clinical social worker. So people who are already clinicians or therapists or people in mental health, uh, especially during these COVID times, like people who want to use energy healing, energy work in their practice, because there's only so much we can do talking, talking about the same problems, talking about the same things and not getting anywhere. So my program is for people who are also already doing the work, but they need more tools to go beyond just the mind. So if you're also one of those people who is looking to invest in going even further than just the traditional ways, 
um, this program is definitely something to look for and, and look at. Yeah, for sure. I'm so I'm so glad that you had time with, to talk to me about it because um, I I know that there are people who are curious about this stuff um, but don't know where to get the information. And um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that Instagram Instagram is great for sharing information, but it's it's one sided. You can't talk to a meme or a post or a. Mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. so it's just like you're intaking, but the the learning actually happens in the exchange. It's in the, yeah. can that right? Can you say that in a different way? You know, that's what I think you and I have, why you and I have been able to collaborate so well is because we can go back and forth and basically translate what each other is saying just to make sure mm -hmm. the most easy to understand version of itself. And that's why um, the information translates. And so that's why I think, you know, having you as um, a guide and a friend now is, you know, uh, it's what you talked about, the light attracting the light, because I, I don't think I, if I would have met you at any other point in my life, I, we, we might not have been able to actually have these kinds of conversations because I wouldn't have been ready. So what mm -hmm. are signs that somebody is ready for something like this? Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a few different, um, but what comes first in my mind is someone who really has a passion for making a difference in the world, someone who is very heart-centered, who wants to uh, change people's lives, wants to make it a better place to live, you know, particularly now with everything that is going on, whether it's social issues, economic issues, environmental issues, mental health issues, like all of these things are so important right now for us to see more light workers, see more people in the healing arts to be out there. You know, we are quote unquote, the warriors going out and changing people's lives, making people get through another day, yeah. you know, pre preventing the generational and trauma of poverty and discrimination and inequalities. Um, now, this is my political side, so I'm getting off track, but <laughs> I'm... say that again. It's all related. <laughs> it is, because that's also my background. I have a BA in public service, political science, and sociology, so my roots are very grounded. I also come from a family of political people, so um, yeah, so people who are, you know, politically driven but who are finding that sacred work, you know, doing these indigenous practices, doing traditions from our cultures, you know, someone who wants to learn more about the traditions of their culture to make a difference for themselves, for their families, um, for their communities. Those people, I think, are who are also attracted to my program. You know, they, they want to make a difference and they want to learn more about themselves more deeply. Um, for someone who is, like I said, a creative, uh, for someone who wants to take uh, their natural born innate gifts and fine tune it, right? Like they want to really know, like, well, what do I do with all this? Like, I kind of know what chakras are, but I don't really know what it is and how do I work with chakra centers. So for people who want to honestly like learn the skills and tools and techniques of how to use them and then be able to apply them either to themselves or professionally. Yeah. Um, definitely those types of people. And then for people who want to take themselves to another level, you know, who want to bump up their their career or want to just elevate their sense of self their confidence level maybe like for me like being so shy and introverted and um, insecure getting out of that kind of mindset and evolving and growing and not being ashamed that you have these abilities and gifts that there's a community here for you and we're all here to support you and to elevate you and to get you to go where you need to go to next. Yeah, um, and you're, that, you're that person to do that. 
I highly thank recommend you. out of 10 would recommend t- Aww, t- thank, you. <laughs> thank you thank you I appreciate that that means a lot to me